Hello, I'm Professor Brian Boucher, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the one rule of grammar in the accounting language, the balance sheet equation. We'll see how the balance sheet equation makes all of the financial statements fit together, and we'll solve some problems where we're missing information, and we can use the balance sheet equation to find the piece of information that we're missing. Hope you enjoy the video. Let's start with a quick review of the required financial statements that we talked about last video. So there's a balance sheet which gives you a firm's financial position, listing of resources and obligations on a specific date, an income statement which is the results of operations over a period of time using accrual accounting where we tie recognition to business activities, which was different from the statement of cash flows which gave you sources and uses over, of cash over a period of time, and then the statement of stockholders' equity, which gives you changes in stockholders' equity over a period of time, which we ignored last video and we'll get to later on. Next, we're going to talk about the balance sheet equation or the accounting identity. So you know when you learn a foreign language, you often have to learn all of these cases and declensions. There's just a whole lot of grammar that you have to get down. In accounting, there's actually only one rule of grammar. Everything in accounting follows assets equals liabilities plus stockholders' equity, which is the balance sheet equation. Another way to say that is all the resources of the company have to equal the claims on those resources by either outsiders or by owners. Can you give me an example of when this is used in the real world? Sure. Probably the most common example where you use this is when you buy something like a house or you buy a car. So let's say you buy a $500,000 house. You put down 50000 of your own money, and then you get a $450,000 mortgage from the bank. Well, you have an asset, $500,000 house, liability mortgage to the bank of 450000 and 50000 of your own equity. And then, of course, as you pay down the mortgage, your equity in the home increases. So anytime that you buy a house or a car or a boat, you're getting an asset. You're often taking on a liability if you borrow money from a bank. And then, of course, you're putting in your own money, which is your equity, your ownership claim on that asset. So again, the balance sheet is going to show you your resources and your claims on those resources at a specific point in time. The balance sheet equation must always balance, and so we're going to talk about something called double entry bookkeeping. If you increase one thing in this equation, you have to increase or decrease another thing to stay in balance. And then changes between two balance sheets are going to be summarized in the income statement, statement of stockholders' equity, and statement of cash flows as follows. So let's say we have a balance sheet at the end of December in 2011. Assets equals liabilities plus stockholders' equity. Now assets we can split up into cash and non-cash assets, so every asset that's not cash. And stockholders equity we could split up into contributed capital and retained earnings. And we're going to talk more about these terms again later in the video. Then you have a balance sheet at the end of December 2012. So again, balance sheets are point in time. The income statement is going to give you the change in retained earnings due to business activities over the year. The statement of cash flows is going to give you the change in cash over the year. Here you go again with the difference between income and cash. Remind me, why are they different? Okay, let's go back to the house example. Let's say at the beginning of the year, in the first balance sheet, you had a $500,000 house asset, $450,000 mortgage, liability, and $50,000 of equity. Then at the end of the year, turns out your house is now worth a million dollars. Now you can't do this in practice, but just let's assume you can for the sake of this example. So let's assume that on your balance sheet at the end of the year, you could value your house at five at a million dollars. Your mortgage doesn't increase, it stays at 450. What has to change? Well, your equity in the house. Your equity in the house would go from 50,000 to 550,000. Because what happens is when home prices go up, your mortgage doesn't change, but your equity goes up. So this would be an example where during the year between those two balance sheets, your cash may have actually been negative as you're paying mortgage payments, but your income statement would show a gain of $500,000 from writing that house up to its new value at the end of the year. Housing prices going up? Can you give us a more contemporary example? 
Yes, so let's talk about what happened during the financial crisis. At the beginning of the year, many banks had assets that were mortgage-backed securities. They're assets because they're claims on collecting cash flow payments from subprime mortgage holders. So let's say you had 10 billion of mortgage-backed securities as assets. You have some amount of liabilities supporting those, maybe 9.5 billion, and then half a billion of equity in that. Financial crisis hits, homeowners are not making their mortgage payments, the value of those assets drops to $1 billion at the balance sheet at the end of the year. Your liabilities don't change, and in fact that's why the government had to bail out some of these banks because their liabilities didn't go down with the value of their assets. What has to change is your equity in those assets, which also has to go down by $9 billion. So there's no cash flow impact, in fact there's no cash coming in at all from a lot of these, but yet your income has to show a loss of $9 billion from writing those assets down from $10 billion at the beginning of the year to $1 billion at the end of the year. Of course, we also have to mention the Statement of Stockholders' Equity, which provides changes in stockholders' equity between two balance sheet dates, which we'll eventually talk about later in the course. What I want to do next is show how everything that we are going to talk about fits into this balance sheet equation of assets equals liabilities plus stockholders' equity. So we've talked about how stockholders' equity has two components. Contributed capital, that's the money that you raise by issuing equity to your owners. And retained earnings, which is equity that you create through operating the business. Retained earnings is going to equal whatever the retained earnings were last time you did a balance sheet, plus your net income during the period, minus dividends. And that's why it's called retained earnings, because it's net income or earnings minus any dividends that you pay out to shareholders. And then as we talked about last video, net income is equal to revenues minus expenses. So if we put all of these equations into the balance sheet equation, we get one big complete balance sheet equation which is going to have almost everything that we're going to talk about in this course. Assets are going to equal liabilities plus contributed capital plus your retained earnings last balance sheet date plus any revenues during the period minus expenses minus any dividends that you pay during the period. Are you going to make us do some mathematics with this? Why, yes, I am going to ask you to do some mathematics. So what we're going to do on the next slide is I'm going to give you some problems, and then we'll talk about the answers. After the problem is read, you'll see a little pause icon on the screen. If you want to try to answer it before I give you the answer, hit pause at that point, try to come up with the answer, and then resume the video. But at this point, if you just want to roll through and hear the answer right away, just keep the video going, you'll get a chance to answer these types of questions on the online homework. And this will be the procedure that will follow any time that I give you some questions that I want you to answer within the lecture. Assets equals 100. Liabilities equals 50. What is stockholders' equity? We can solve this one with the balance sheet equation. We know we have assets of 100, liabilities of 50. The only thing that's missing in the equation is stockholders' equity, which has to equal 50 so that we have 100 on the left-hand side and 100 on the right-hand side. Liabilities increase by 100 and stockholders' equity is unchanged. What is the change in assets? We also use the balance sheet equation to solve this one. Now we're looking at changes in value. So stockholders' equity is not changing. Liabilities are going up by 100. The only way to stay in balance is for assets to also go up by 100, so that each side of the equation goes up by the same amount. All non-cash assets equals 70. Total liabilities equals 60. Total stockholders' equity equals 30. What is cash? We can again use the balance sheet equation for this one, but we need to separate assets into cash and non-cash assets. So we have liabilities and stockholders' equity of 90 total on the right-hand side. 
Non-cash assets are 70 on the left. To be in balance, cash has to equal 20 in this case. Cash decreases by 10 and non-cash assets increase by 15. What is the change in liabilities? We can use the same equation for this one where we split assets into cash and non-cash assets, but we have to be a little careful. We have cash going down, non-cash assets going up. The net change is an increase in assets of 5 on the left. We're looking for liabilities, but we don't know what happened with stockholders' equity. And because we don't know what happened with stockholders' equity, we actually don't have enough information to solve this. If we knew that stockholders' equity hadn't changed, then liabilities would have had to go up by 5. But unless we know that, we don't have enough information to solve this, and we have to be really careful. Oh, come on. A trick question. Really? Uh, sorry about the trick question, but I promise it won't be the last. Retained earnings increase by 100. Dividends equals 50. What is net income? A couple of slides ago, we looked at the equation for retained earnings, where retained earnings equals whatever retained earnings were at the beginning of the year, prior retained earnings, plus net income during the year, minus dividends. We know that retained earnings increased, which means that the difference between the two retained earnings is 100. That's on the left-hand side. That has to equal net income minus dividends. If dividends are 50, then the net income that makes this balance is 150. Revenue increases by 100 and all other categories are unchanged except assets. What is the change in assets? We have to use the complete balance sheet equation to answer this one where we have assets equals liabilities and then we split stockholders equity into contributed capital, prior retained earnings, revenues, expenses, and dividends. Here we know that revenue went up by 100 Everything other than assets is unchanged. So it's not a trick question. You can actually answer this one. If revenue goes up by 100, then we've got the right side going up by 100. Assets on the left also would have to go up by 100 to stay in balance. Expenses increase by 60 and all other categories are unchanged except cash. What is the change in cash? We use the same complete balance sheet equation for this one, except we split assets into cash and non-cash assets. Here we know that the only thing that's changing is cash and expenses. Everything else is unchanged, so we can assume everything else is zero. If expenses are going up on the right side, notice that expenses are subtracted from the other things. So an increase of expense is a reduction in the right-hand side which means that the left-hand side of the equation also has to go down by 60, and so cash would decrease by 60 if expenses went up by 60. I think I can do this. Can we do more maths problems? Finally, some positive feedback. The, the purpose of this exercise was to expose you to a kind of problem we're going to be doing quite a bit in this course. There'll be some piece of information that you need but don't have, but you can calculate it based on other things you're given and a set of equations, which we're usually going to see in the form of T accounts or journal entries. So this is the kind of problem we're going to do quite a bit. Wow, has it been 15 minutes already? Time really flies when you're working with the balance sheet equation. So we should probably wrap up this video. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. See you next video.